Good evening, everyone. It's time for another episode on Gelvin Valley. The ear is our trusty sheep. We're going to leave him or her here in the dust as we head out to our tractor and keep ripping up the ground. Looks like we're in field 41, just shy of doing our largest field here. Looks like we're ready to go. You know, I have to ask myself, even as I do these, and I, I consider tonight, uh, this is my 46th episode, I think, if I've counted correctly. 46, uh, <laughs> well, I guess first off, I never imagined there'd be 46 episodes that probably very few people will ever see. So, in the way I'm having these released, this one I'm recording here, I mean, this is right at the tail end of June, and it'll probably be September before it actually comes into the queue in terms of being released. I know some of the guys I've talked to that have done this before that have way more experience and are better at it. Uh, I, I know Atomic, I mean, I can't remember how many episodes he's racked up max on some. I think for Delvin Valley he had 17 episodes before he moved on and thinking uh, another storyteller I like listening to uh, Reefy 1952 I think he's had some that's had over a hundred episodes so I'm nowhere near that yet and I think his episodes tend to be quite a bit longer than the ones that I'm doing And maybe some of the guys don't uh, don't record everything. I mean, I don't <laughs> I don't know what to do. I come in here and start up recording again, and I just pick up you know wherever I left off. I know I've heard some other guys say you know they'll do stuff off cam or whatever, and I don't know. Don't know what I'm doing. Don't know who's listening to this or what good it's doing for humanity. All I know is I don't like recording one. So I'm trying to remember where what I was talking about last time. I think it was about was it the rock mod? Getting all these little rocks to show up here. I think I mentioned in that one, you know, how I'd been mentored by his intro and um, you know, I had received a lot of help um, in, in making my first mod, and I think I said in there I was going to talk at length more about it later. You all are probably bored with it by now, and I basically gave a brief overview kind of in the last video anyhow. But uh, I really, really appreciated it. It's... Um, you know, where I work, I am responsible for mentoring a couple young men uh, that are employees, and I gotta say, it was a it was a woodcutter over in Sweden that I'll probably never meet in real life, who, in many ways, taught me a lot about how to mentor someone, and. I'm still not going to say I have it all figured out or everything. I just, I see the experience as having more applicability or more application than just for, you know, the silly game here that would be a joke play. And we were able to do it, you know, that was long before things like COVID happened and, you know, where the whole world was shut down and we all had to, you know, communicate more on email and, uh, Microsoft Teams or whatever. Oh, hey, there's a little red rock. <laughs> I love it. I like these rocks. So anyway, we did most of our communicating at FSU UK just via the, the message system that they had there. So that worked pretty well. It's about the equivalent of email. 
and our time zones, you know, are quite a bit apart, so, you know, I presume he'd be sleeping when I was working on stuff, and there were times, you know, I'd work long into the night, you know, and even right now, I should be in bed at the time I'm recording this, it's pretty late, but, so yeah, I mean, there's just a number of thoughts that come to mind, you know, whether mentorship, you know, it's, uh, in, in, in the terms of how I apply it in real life to the employees that I have at work um, or my own kids, you know, I think there's just some lessons learned there. Even through a, a silly game, it, uh, he, uh, I'd say he was patient with me and, you know, I told him at the get-go going into it, I don't know anything, like nothing. And and I said, but I don't want you to do it. I, I need a teacher, and, you know, a good lot of the teaching I just did myself, you know, just by reading over and over and over anything I could get my hands on pertaining to Lua coding, you know, to kind of teach myself how to do it. And at the same time, I started to write a script, and I wish... I wish now I had kept some of the earliest versions that I did because I think they would be so far out of whack that, you know, I would just laugh at them, looking at them now, but I don't even remember how it started. You know, with the Lua coding, you have to do some very specific things for the game engine to even see your script in the first place. So kind of the first hurdle you have is just getting the game to say, okay, we see your script, now what do you want us to do about it? And, I guess we're on to field 42 here. And I don't know if it would be of interest to anyone. You know, again, I realize Armisen 15 is getting to be a little long in the tooth as a old game. But, but you know, I don't know that I've ever seen on YouTube a video with someone teaching other people how to do Lua scripting or farming simulator. It just doesn't exist. You know, you'll find videos on how to do Lua scripting, but it isn't uh, it isn't specific to farming simulator or or anything like that. Um, so I don't know if anybody would be interested to see it. Like I say, this is an old game, and I haven't totally kept up on, um, you know, Giants Bill is providing some information. They typically do each game at a certain point. They release some of their scripts, and then it's kind of the job of the Lua scripter to read those and glean information on how to make their own or how to put them together, how they interrelate, and so forth. And, and of course that was all brand new for me then. So, so I know one of the things I, I wanted, and I think I explained, I wanted the, east, the ability to dig up rocks with an implement such as I'm pulling right now. And so I knew it had to have a script to go on it. I knew it had to have objects, you know, kind of like the Baylor spits it out fails. I would have to come up with some rock objects and those object X, in turn, you know, maybe would require their own coding. And you know, as it turned out, it did. I know for a while the, the rocks were all treated as bales, and that was kind of a band aid for deferring testing and whatnot. Uh, but eventually, my mentor pushed me to come up with my own coding for for the rock object X, you know, themselves. So all these things go into a mod, you know, we just slap them into the mods folder and it's so easy to never think about all the work behind it. Some of which may have been done by someone, you know, like me, who was totally green and is, and, you know, trying to figure things out. And, and if anything, you know, I, there's a number of lessons learned, I suppose, you know, one of just learning to mentor people and being entered and having 
oh, I don't know what you call it, you know, I guess lots of people don't like these words, but it takes a certain attitude, uh, maybe humility to be taught by someone, because when you're wrong and you don't even know it because you don't know what you don't know, you have to be willing to be told that you're wrong, <laughs> and that can hurt. I mean, I, I received, I was on receiving end of that a number of times, you know, where I thought I had something nailed, and I thought I did it. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's that aspect of it, but another thing to, you know, maybe keep in mind is, you know, there's all kinds of crummy mods, you know, that get put out there, and having had to learn from scratch myself, um, I don't know, I, I guess I feel a little more forgiving towards those who release mods. I know that they're excited maybe to get them out there. Uh, they want to share something, they got an idea, they want to get it out there, and it isn't quite perfect. And, you know, we went through that. I made a series of videos on some combine surgery, I think I called it. You know, that little new hall of combine we've used in here to harvest. You know, as has a number of things mixed up on it and I may still not have found it everything and so you know I'll just try to fix things as I go but but there's a lot of mods that get released that, that really need a little more work and I, I don't know I guess <laughs> I guess we all wish they, they would be finished before they get out there but but I will say this if they're not finished and someone has a mind to learn um, a lot of times you can use those as instruments of learning how to mod yourself, um, you know, just by trying to fix the mistakes that other people are making. And then by the same token, I think seeing that and, oh, seeing some of the, uh, <laughs> don't know what you say, some of the comments, shall we say, that get made towards people that release, you know, some mods that maybe aren't totally finished, um, you know, you see that, and it's like, well, you know, I don't want to be that person, so if, if I'm working on something, you know, I want to make sure it's as good as possible before I turn them loose out to the general public. I know that's something my mentor told me, too. He says, uh, try to avoid having version one, two, and three of your mod, you know, if you can, you know, try to get good testers who will so thoroughly test your mod, they will do everything they can to basically to break it so that uh, you have all of those problems ironed out before it goes to the public. And I gotta say, I, mean, I, I don't know how many mods I released. Most of them have been uh, Lewis Grip type mods. You know, there's maybe, I, d I did a couple for 15 and I don't know how many for 17 and maybe 10 all total. So not a whole bunch. But I gotta say it's stressful after you've gone to all this work to put something together and then it gets out to the public and, and lots of people have it in their hands and then all of a sudden they start finding stuff. And I don't know, I always felt that I was kind of stressful because, well, no matter how much of this coding stuff I've done, it's still something, um, I don't know, I guess I don't consider myself very good at, because it just isn't my training or, or, or what have you, my day job, if you will, and I keep it after it, so hopefully continue to improve and everything, but when someone finds an error, you know, the first thing that goes through my mind is, you know, just a sense of responsibility, you know, here I put out a product, if you can call it that. And the product is defective, isn't working, whatever. And people who are, if I can use the term, relying on my product now have a broken product in hand, they're upset or need it fixed. And the pressure then is is on to get it fixed. And so I've experienced that a couple times and it's, uh, it's very uncomfortable, at least for me. So, um, you know, I see what my mentor was saying and trying to have it right the first time, you know, if you will, before sending it out to the public. And not everybody, I realize, is going to care about that. I, I know some people just release them and they never look back. 
but i don't know i guess i feel a little more sense of a responsibility than that so yeah all these things you you learn when you try to mod just a little bit and i'm i'm learning uh even with youtube it's it's a whole separate discipline. I can't remember if I've talked about this in the videos before, but I, I don't know. I kind of look at it as a three-legged stool in the gaming community, if you will. You have the players, and they arguably have the easiest role. You know, they just install the game, and they play it, and they do whatever they do. And it's probably the largest group. And you have um, a modding leg of the stool. You know, where people figure out what makes a game tick, what might be an idea for a mod to add to the game, and then they go about learning the technical, getting the technical know-how to put it into the game and, and whatnot. And then there's a third leg of the stool uh, for the community that's the YouTubers or the content creators. And I'm learning you know, I've tried to take the easiest way I can think of to do these videos. I mean, believe me, it's easy, except for figuring out what to say on these videos. Um, most of it's easy. I just start the recorder, and and when I'm done, I just hit the same button and turn it off, and then whatever comes out, I kind of just, that's what I have to load. How should I break this one? I will do it. S. Oops. Oh, I'll just head out. Oh, that's the point. I don't think I've worked in this direction before. I do appreciate GPS. It really helps. Although I don't mind going around and around. It. I mean, in real life, I think in the fields, sometimes we would go around and around, do the whole way. So, I mean, in trying to do a little bit of YouTube, there are, you know, one thing I haven't really got into that much yet is um, editing videos. So. My friend Atomic has been trying to help me out on that, teach me some things, and he's flat out overwhelmed me a time or two with just information to look for this and look for that. And, and I so appreciate it because, you know, kind of like he was telling me, you know, when he started out, he didn't have the benefit of someone telling him how to do it or tips and tricks, things to watch for, you know, things that may be an experienced YouTube broadcaster would just know like the back of their hand anymore. Just kind of like, you know, as you pick things up and modding, you know, you start doing things and thinking a certain way that someone else that's new to it, you know, just doesn't have that perspective yet. And it just takes time, you know, that most precious of all commodities to, uh, to kind of get into it. So, like I said at the beginning, this is my 46th episode of Elven Valley. Never would have imagined I'd have this many on there. Um, and who knows how long I'll go into this, how long I'll choose to continue boring people who trouble themselves to watch this before maybe trying something else. I've kind of alluded to it, but there's another map I'd like to try that I've worked really hard on doing a uh, a number of edits and whatnot. Um, so we'll see. But I do like Elven Valley, so even if I don't do YouTube on it, I may keep what I save because I'd like to at least get my debts paid off and have the comfort of that. But back on this rock spawn mod and learning the Lua, having a mentor, uh, all of that and the experience, you know, another thing I think I would share on it is in those days, and when I say in those days, when I was doing this, it was 
early early 2016 somewhere in there and I had known the game if you will for maybe a year about a year and, and I still don't know what was it asked for me to try Lua um, there was a couple times I was very close to just throwing my hands up and quitting and I suppose this is where I'm supposed to stay while I'm glad I didn't quit well <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm glad or not, you know, the the number of, they weren't entirely sleepless nights, I won't call them that, but let me just tell you, if you learn modding, or, or even the YouTubing, I imagine, it's going to take a piece of you, and I had heard some people talk about that, you know, some describing it as a rabbit hole, uh, some describing it as something that just would, could potentially own your time and steal from your other priorities. And you know, I gotta say, you do have to be careful about that if it's something you get involved in, because it's it's a lot, lot of work. And you know, I'm a I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a family man. It's there's a lot of um, and, and small business owner, there's just a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire. And so any one of those priorities can be dropped, you know, if, if a person isn't careful. But the reality is, in order to learn this stuff, and I realize, I mean, there's going to be people out there who are flat out geniuses and can figure it out a whole lot quicker. You know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, as they say. And so, and, and if you have a little bit of training, you know, in some of the disciplines required in body, you know, Lua, or, or any kind of computer coding in this case, you're going to be light years ahead of, of anyone else. Uh, but I was starting from ground zero. I have a feeling most people start, you know, at nothing. So if you want to know how to do it, you have to have the dedication and time to put in to figure things out. And not only time, I mean, there's no amount of uh, banging your head against the wall, you know, that's going to just magically figure something out for you. So at the time, uh, early 2016, there was a wonderful forum on the internet, you know, that I found for Army Sim. You know, once I got into the game, it's like, wow. You know, I, and I wondered what else might be out there on the internet, so of course, did the search, found several forums, and kind of initially, most all of my time I spent on FSU UK, which was a British or, or, or a forum set centered kind of in the UK, if you will, and was there for several years. That's kind of where I met Centro. Lots of people posted. Um, helpful information about the game, about how to play it, about modding, you know, and on a wide variety of topics. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't as much Lua coding information there as maybe on some other things, but, but you know, I mean, that's just me. When you're learning, you're starting from nothing, maybe it seems like there's no information anywhere, and maybe if I would have chosen a 3D model game, rather than Lua to try to learn. Maybe I would have said, oh, there's not much here on 3D modeling, so <laughs> it's probably all relative uh, on that. But there were helpful posts, and I remember just spending hours, you know, uh, going through the forum, searching. They had, uh, it had been in existence for, oh goodness, I don't know how many years quite a while, and there was many older posts, you know, this at the time I was learning to make this for Arms and 15, uh, but there was stuff in there for Arms and 13, 11, 9, and I don't know if there's anything on there for 8, Arms and 8, kind of the first version, uh, but just learning how to mod, and sometimes it would take all the ad time looking something up just to find that one little nugget of information lurking somewhere on the forum that had the answer you were looking for. 
and sometimes i mean it's it terminology and things that i know now i had no clue then you know for example if i say the term clip distance to somebody you know is that something they would understand what it means well I, I still remember kind of searching for that one. It was more the concept I was searching for. I didn't know the term until all of a sudden, oh yeah, the term I finally learned was clip distance. You know, at what distance in game does an object fade so that the player can't see it? It's kind of an efficiency type, uh, an efficiency aspect. To where if you don't need to see something, well then you don't have the game render it <clears throat> at a particular spot. But if you don't know what a clip distance is, or even that the term is clip distance, I mean, can you imagine how long you'd have to search just to find something on that? At least I had to. And that was one concept of many. You know, whether it was coding a different... Lua commands or different variables used by the Lua engine. Um, just a ton of research sometimes to find that one that'll answer you're looking for. And I would say, by the way, the, the people I met through FSUK by and large were, were just awesome. Um, helpful. And, and on that, I mean, anytime you're online, it's kind of like when you're in school and you make friends and you know they always say you can choose your friends or the people you associate with or or just a person's attitude you can be a, a debbie downer you can try to be positive it's no no secret that a lot of these uh forums and online communities you know are populated also with trolls and people who are there just to make your life difficult or never want to be helpful, or they're all always the one that will show up and say, oh, you know, your question's been answered 5,000 times already. Have you heard of the search button? Or they'll put something in there about, you know, let me Google that for you. Just being sarcastic and not helpful at all. And truth be told, the people that leave such posts probably don't even have the answer themselves. And all they know how to do is to ridicule other people. So, I mean, you're going to have that there, too. Um, and and I know sometimes that disturbed a lot of people, and they'd be upset. Oh, you know, the forum isn't what it used to be. People aren't helpful. Well, what I found or learned was, you know, you just ignore all those, the trolls. You don't have to give them the time of day. And, you know, if someone isn't going to help, well, I mean, they're not going to help, and you just take it with a grain of salt. But what I learned is there were plenty of people that if you showed a little bit of initiative and were trying to do something, they got in back of you like they were doing it themselves. You know, it's just it was just incredible the number of things, you know, that I would see on there. Uh, one of the aspects of FSUK and, and some of the other forums that are out there, were out there at the time. You know, they would have these uh, work-in-process uh, threads that a modder could set up and, you know, just to generate interest in whatever project he was taking on, whatever mod it was, and so he would uh, show a few pictures maybe of what he was doing, give some description, and, and then kind of update it over time so people could kind of watch and see what was going on. And... If someone was working on it and they kept up a little bit of communication, oftentimes there would be people that would come back to the thread over and over again and they would leave helpful comments, they would offer suggestions, um, you know, there'd be offers to help test, and, and just all sorts of positivity. And it, I don't know, it's just one of those things I guess I've learned in life you have to look for. You know, it's so easy just to be discouraged, get down, um, and that's not a healthy way to think. You know, we need to try to be more positive if we want, you know, something positive to come in our lives, uh, both in, in our own and how we interact with other people. And and so that, that's just something I, I learned, and I set up 
a couple uh, whip threads, and I, I did one for for the rock spawn behind. And I'll maybe talk about that in the next um, video a little bit. I see I'm getting kind of to the end of the half hour here. Uh, but it, I found it, I found it helpful in one regard and uh, stressful maybe in another. But like I say, I'll kind of talk about that, that in another video. Again, I'm always amazed at how quickly a half an hour seems to pass by up here, so I'm going to just call it right there as, a, as an episode. Thank you for taking time to listen to me ramble on. Hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at, and I'll talk to you on the next one. Take care for now.